Good morning. This is Kelly Hobart on Technique Tuesday, and I'm here with my Mrs. Hub slipper pattern. And I don't know if any of you have seen it out there, but we've had a, a lot of people download this pattern, right, Jim? <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like. Here's what the pattern looks like. And it is a pattern that I created, and I wanted to share my journey with you. Can you see it okay, Jim? Yep. And what it is, is it's, you know those old-fashioned slippers? It, they have a pattern on Ravelry. It's called Aunt Maggie's Slippers. And it's very similar to, it's I, I believe it's this pattern. And do you see how it has garter stitch edge on it? It has a garter stitch edge. And then it has this toe that is a... It's like the top of a hat. You pull it tight and you uh, weave in your ends, much like a top of a hat. But it's kind of, um, the toe is kind of thick. And so um, I went on a journey to try and see if I could find a, uh, make a slipper pattern that had all of the best qualities, like had the cute look of the slipper, but had differences. So on this one, you see there's uh, pearl bumps on the bottom of your foot. That's the inside of the shoe. And standing on pearl bumps isn't always ideal. It can feel a little rough on the bottom of your foot. So I decided, okay, I want to create a slipper that is made all in one piece. And it has the same look of the Aunt Maggie slippers, but it has some, the, all of the best qualities, and then I added some great qualities to make it even better. And so here is my slippers that I wear at home. And this one's a little bit stretched out from being on a shoe form thing. Hold it up a little longer. Can you see it? So this one has a really nice top edge, and that is a three stitch slip stitch um, pattern that creates that nice, uh, almost like an I cord edge to it, right? And then you can see on the bottom of my slipper, it has the pearl bumps, which is really nice because these pearl bumps are like anti-skid. So it is anti-skid, so I like that. Um, but if you look on the inside of the slipper, it has this lovely double knit without double knitting pattern. And if you see on the inside of this other pattern, it is the pearl bumps. So pearl bumps are nice looking, but not quite as um, lovely on the bottom of your foot when you're standing on them. So you can see how this is soft and squishy and it's thick. It's called double knitting without double knitting. And it's a really easy ribbed pattern that you can do on the bottom of your slipper to make it so that it's thick without double knitting. It's totally fantastic. And then, what I do at the back of my slipper is I use Judy's Magic Cast On for the back of it. And it creates, let's see if you can see on here, it creates a seamless cast on. And it you can't even hardly tell where you cast on and um, where you created the back of that heel. Isn't that awesome? So I wanted to talk, show you how to do that today. But before I get started with that, I wanted to show you the other ones here. This is a, a smaller version of the same thing. It has the really nice bottom of the foot. And it has the nice three stitch slip stitch edge, which it adds, um, how shall I say it? It kind of like adds structure to your slipper. So it makes it so it, it stays on your foot easier. And it's um, really, it actually gives it a little bit of kind of polish look to it. Do you see how it's a little tiny bit fancier? It's kind of cool. Anyway, I was very excited about that. For all the different variations. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm getting there. So uh, this was a pair of just crocheted slippers that I did. And you can see that I've worn them lots. And the thing about these, they fit great. Um, this one is, I forget what, it, it's like a cotton uh, blend. It's more of a summertime thing, but it has the lower back heel. So it doesn't always, if you're like me and you run around a lot, the back of the heel can sometimes slide off your foot. Plus this is, you can see it's a little bit longer than the other ones, but it doesn't have as much stretch as the actual wool does. And that's why it needed to be a little bit longer. But these are nice too. So, um, and 
lastly, I wanted to show you this pattern. I used to make this all the time and make it with alpaca. This is with al baby alpaca yarn. And um, this is, um, it's by Crisp Basta. It's a slipper pattern that's free on Ravelry. And what she does is she teaches you to make the sole and then you pick up stitches all the way around. The problem with this is when I made it for my daughter, she's like, mom, I like the slipper okay, but it leaves this ridge on the inside of your slipper. And do you see that ridge? This ridge right here? It gives you, it gives your slipper a bump that you feel when you're walking around. So it's not ideal, but um, but it's still a very good pattern and a lot of people have made it. I just was trying to make one that is all in one piece. So I have two tails to weave in, the tail from when I first started my project and then at the very end, my tail. And so I only have two um, tails to weave in. Show the inside of yours now so we can compare the two. For this one? Yeah, because that one doesn't have any roots, right? Yeah. So we have, this is the Chris Basta uh, slipper pattern that's on Ravelry. And you could see, it's kind of, this isn't fair because I've, I've worn it a bit, but you could see how, do you see the ridges? Can you see the difference? How there's ridges and then no ridges. So this bottom sole was knit all in one piece as part of the slipper. And this one, you had to pick up stitches all the way around. And no matter how careful you are, you will get that ridge. Either if you don't get any ridge and you might get a hole then <laughs> if you don't pick up um, enough of when you're trying to pick up your stitches, if you picked up one strand or something, um, it might get sl sloppy and loose and maybe you, it might create holes. But of course, I picked up both strands and you know how it is. So you guys, as we're going along, don't forget to tell us where you're from. Maybe what project you're working on because I love looking at your projects. And then it gives me ideas for future um, Technique Tuesdays. And so... And also every week we have a prize. So for this last week, our prize was a choice between the Chowgu needles and our Knitter's Pride carbons. And I think the winner for that was uh, carbons needles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for this week, I was thinking, how about some vintage chunky? And the reason why I thought vintage chunky would be great is it's more of a summertime yarn. It has less wool in it because this yarn has 52% acrylic, 40% wool, and 8% nylon. So I'm using this yarn to actually make my next uh, set of slippers. So I have kind of a summery, uh, not so, quite so hot yarn um, because these alpaca ones are lovely and warm, but <laughs> you don't want to be blowing smoke out your ears when it's like 90 degrees outside, right? Yeah, you don't want to be wearing your alpaca slippers or you'll be um, not feeling too cozy. <laughs> you'll be feeling hot. <laughs> so I thought this week using the vintage chunky would be great. And the way that you get entered to win is you post comments in the comment section. Maybe you let us know what you're working on, uh, pattern, pictures, anything like that. It's all much appreciated. And don't forget to share with your buddies because we all like to learn together. Oh, I also wanted to show you my Subaki sweater. See, it's coming along. I'm knitting and knitting. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So it's getting bigger and pretty soon, I'm hoping I can wear it at least once before the weather turns too warm for me to be able to wear it. But I'm having fun with the pattern. Now, the pattern, I have it all memorized because it's straight knitting. There's no um, increases or decreases or anything like that on that part of the pattern. So I, all I have to do is do the cable every 12 rounds and I'm good to go. And then the uh, little one by one cables are done every other round. I'm either making a right or left twist on these little guys right here on these guys. And then this, the big cables every 12 rounds. And that's gonna fit you? That'll yes, fit you? yes, because remember, Sueno stretches. <laughs> Woo, it gets nice and big, oh yes. And so this will fit me just fine. Yes, because I have done a sample and I blocked it. Okay. And so um, it should fit me just fine. And this is the pattern that, um, the Subaki pullover, that was the one that I was knitting for last week. So it's totally fantastic. I really like it. I'm looking forward to it. I want to make another one. And I want to make it out of the um, DK Tweed in the Sueno. 
Speaking and of so I'm looking forward to that. The Knit Club you wanted me to remind you about mentioning that. Tonight. Oh, yes. For all of you out there that are having problems with the Knit Club for this last month, um, it's um, some people have a hard time wrapping their minds around the yarn, slip one yarn over and brioche knit and brioche pearl. And I've done another video for you. And I did it both um, the continental style, which is having the working yarn in your left hand, and that's called picking, or the classic style of knitting, which is holding your working yarn in your right hand, and that is called throwing. So if you need help with either way, um, uh, knitting, you'll have it on that video. So go check that out for you Knit Club members that are having a hard time figuring out our brioche. <laughs> it's please, all of you out there that are trying to learn, just stick with it. And don't forget when you're reading a pattern, sometimes it pays to not overthink it. Sometimes it pays to just take the pattern and when it says knit one, knit one. And then when it says slip one, yarn over, just do it. Just slip, slip it needle tip to needle tip and put that yarn right over the top of your working needle. And you'll be surprised how the pattern will turn out lovely. <laughs> because in the beginning of brioche, it doesn't actually look like brioche until you get two rows into it. And you really can't start to see it developing for some people have a hard time visualizing it for about four rows, don't you think, Jim? And then once you get a good start on it, Oh my goodness, it's so easy to see. Then you won't have any problems at all. But in the beginning, just have faith. <laughs> it will work out and you will love it. So let's take a look at Mrs. Hupp's slippers and see what we have here. So I, the reason why I decided to do a Technique Tuesday on Mrs. Hupp's slippers is because, you know what? I want you guys all to enjoy this lovely pattern. It took me such a while to... Um, create it and get everything to work out. I wanted to make sure that you enjoy it. So here I am, I have done, I have done my right-sided row. And then it tells you to turn your work. So you see, I've done Judy's Magic Cast On. And you can see right here, the bottom of the heel is starting to, the inside of your heel, that's what you're looking at. And if you look at on this side, there's gonna be some knit stitches here. That's gonna be that, this little ridge. Let me see if I can show you. It's gonna be this little ridge right here. And then we have some garter stitch that's gonna be forming. And then right here at the very top, that's the three stitches that are slipped, which is this section right here. Isn't that cool? So let's take a look at it and see what we've got. So I'm going to show you from a wrong sided row on row number two. So I did Judy's Magic Cast On and I knit halfway around. What, Jim? I'll just push it out a little bit there. Yeah, no problem. And um, um, let me see. So I have my, I'm looking for my working yarn. Here is my working yarn. Okay, we don't want to knit with our tail. And let's see what we got here. We have, now do you see how I turned my work? And I'm gonna be going purl three because I want to keep that nice knit um, edge, a knit edged. I don't want it to turn into garter stitch, right? And then we're going to slip our marker. And if we're looking at this, this is the wrong side row number two. Okay, then we're gonna slip our marker and then we're gonna maintain that garter stitch section which says knit nine. Oops, there's my tail. It's trying to run away from me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, then we slip the marker and let's see here. Slip one purl wise with your yarn in front. So slip it needle tip to needle tip with my working yarn in the front because this is the inside of the slipper that's forming. Okay. And then we slip that other marker and we're going to be for the bottom of the foot pattern. It is knit one, slip one with yarn in back, knit one. So the repeat is slip one purl wise with yarn and back knit one, slip one purl wise with yarn and back and knit one, slip one purl wise and knit one. 
And we're going to be doing that all the way over to this other edge. <clears throat> Oops, did you just see what I just did? <laughs> that was not good. I pulled the wrong needle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good thing I was hanging on to it and I had it just fine. All right. That would be bad. Okay, so let's see where we are. We have a knit one and a slip one. And then we have a knit one and a slip one. And this one is a knit one. And we're going to slip this one with the yarn and back. And we're going to knit one and slip one and knit one and slip one and knit one and slip one and knit one. Okay. And we did that seven times and we're going to slip our marker and we're going to slip one purl wise with yarn in front. And then on this next section, this is the garter stitch section again. Oh, great. Now I was knitting with my tail. <laughs> <laughs> darn, darn, darn. Okay, so if you ever do this, what you do, all you do is you go right on backwards. And if you want to go backwards in your work, the easiest way, let me show you how to do it. Because I'm going to have to go back and grab my working yarn because I was messing around with my tail. Okay. We do not want to use our tail when we're knitting. This is bad. Okay. And let's see what we got here. That one is my slip one. So if we ever do that, and don't do what I did that the last time, you grab that needle and push it into position, bring that one back around. And boy, I did the whole thing in my tail. Well, that was no good at all. Darn. Oh, well. That's okay. Then I get to show you guys how to go backwards. See, we all mess up sometimes. It's all good. It's part of our journey. I always tell myself if I have to go backwards in my work or I have to take work out, it's fine with me. You know why? Because I get to use, I always use lovely yarn and I don't mind knitting it twice. So it works for me. Right, Jim? Mm -hmm. I always say it's an inex inexpensive way to knit when you have to knit it twice. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're not paying for the yarn and you get to use it twice. <laughs> yeah, Jim said, that's great. You should always do that. <laughs> uh, yes, honey. Don't forget to grab that tail. There was a question that asked if I knit and I said, um, my answer is that I, knit, I know enough about knitting to know when not to interrupt you. Right. Yes, my honey does know that. And he's actually pretty darn good at it, I would say. Yeah, okay, so why did I? That was so weird. I must have had my tail for a while. There's a suggestion, she says, to avoid the tail knitting. She says she ties a bow around the tail with another color yarn. Oh, that is an excellent idea. I needed to do that today. <laughs> Look at, but I think I worked my, I used my um, tail for quite some time. I'm having to go back really far. Wow. Let me just not pull the wrong needle. You know, it's actually good that I do this sometimes because number one, it makes you slow down and pay attention to what you're doing. And then, oh, interesting. Okay, so now this was my, when I was working with my, uh, the Judy's Magic Cast on and I did the very first row. I had swapped my, um, needles. I had swapped my tail way back there. That was something. Wow. Okay, so then we'll just go ahead and knit those. Now I have my tail. Okay, now I'm back to my working yarn. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Okay, so here we are. We're back to our pearl three, right back to the beginning. Okay. Thank you so much for fixing that tablecloth for me. All right. So we have our pearl three and then we're on to our garter stitch edge, right? I'm looking at my wrong side row two. Oh, oh, now I'm throwing my needle, my stitch marker. One, two, 
So what is it you're doing four. now? We're, I'm knitting the part, hopefully, with my working yarn this time. Yes, I am. Shoo! I'm doing the garter stitch edge right now. So I just did maintain that um, the three stitch slip stitch edge. And then I have my garter stitch section. And then, re then I'm at the stitch marker where I'm gonna slip that stitch, which is what it is, is this little stitch right here. It's that stitch. So I slipped that one. And now I'm gonna be working on the bottom of the foot stitch. And that one was, a um, knit one. I got to make sure I'm not reading the wrong thing. Okay, so it's knit one, slip one with yarn and back. Knit one. So I'm slip one with yarn and back. Oops, with yarn and back. And knit one. And slip one. And knit one. And I do that all the way till I get to the next um, stitch marker. But you can see how I'm going on this side of Judy's Magic Cast On, I'm going all the way around the corner. That makes the bottom of the foot. And then on this side up here, I turn and go in the other direction, much as if I'm knitting flat. Um, but uh, I'm actually knitting flat with a curve in it. Do you know what I mean by that? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Okay, so we had... Uh, knit one and slip one with yarn and back and knit one and slip one with yarn and back and knit one and slip one with yarn and back and knit one and slip one with yarn and back and the very last stitch this stitch matches that stitch it should end with a knit one and it does and then we have our stitch that we're slipping with the yarn in front because that is going to be this little guy on the other side of the your heel and then we have garter stitch and that's pretty easy and then we go all the way till we get to the last three stitches and when we get to the last three stitches we slip those and I'll show you how you do that so we got we have those all knit and then we have to slip three our wrong sided is slip three pearl wise with yarn in front, meaning needle tip to needle tip. That's what pearl wise means. You just slide them around out over with your working yarn in the front. Okay. And then when you come back around to here, do you see how we have some garter stitch going? And then we have knit stitches going. And then this is going to be the inside of your foot. You can see the um, knit stitches starting to emerge. So that is how you create the back of the heel of your um, Mrs. Hep slippers. So what I was thinking is that's how easy it is to use our Judy's Magic cast on. Use just only attach it on one side. The other side is free and open. That makes the opening for your foot. <laughs> and it creates a lovely slipper. So I am going to knit some of my slipper this week. And then starting next week, I'll show you how the pattern on the bottom of the foot changes. Because you're, instead of knitting it flat, you're going to be changing it to knitting in the round. Um, it, the pattern's a little bit different. But it's not that different. <laughs> so there's a question yeah. they said, yeah. why do you call it Mrs. Hep slippers? Oh, Mrs. Hep. Okay, she was this, there, I have um, a large family. And when I was growing up, this lady kind of uh, took my twin sister and I underneath her wing and allowed us to go to her cabin. And we would bake apple pies on the open fireplace. And she was just a very old fashioned, traditional lady. She had an apple orchard. Um, her cabin was way out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we had um, an outside uh, outhouse, they would call it, mm -hmm. for um, the facilities. Um, but it was great fun because we were able to watch the deer. And she just was a lovely, a very old fashioned, traditional lady that, um, that was near and dear to my heart. And so I named the slippers after her. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it, it's a great fun pattern. It's kind of like potato chips. You can't have too many <laughs> unless you're trying to be on that bright line eating. <laughs> In which case you can have way too many. <laughs> so I hope all of you are doing great. Let's go ahead and announce the winner here. Oh, the choice was the carbons, right? Mm -hmm. And we have Peggy Mowry as Where'd the winner, are? right? 
yay, Peggy, all you have to do is contact us and we'll send these out in the mail to you. And you can try them and see what you think of them. Maybe you can post comments in the comment section or let us know with a, a little note um, so that we can share your um, whatever you learned about these lovely needles with the rest of our knitters out there. So that's totally fantastic. And don't forget, all of you, this week's prize is going to be for some vintage chunky. And we choose either minty or lemon yellow. And you guys choose, and this will be the price for next week. And you can enjoy this lovely vintage yarn, which makes a nice um, spring project. And so that's totally great. And next week, we will learn how to join our slippers together because we will have made almost all of it. And then I will um, be able to share that with you and enjoy it with you, too. So you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you next Tuesday.